let's look at how much uh, carbon we've been using up over the last uh, 100 years or more. And we find that uh, <clears throat> back in the uh, sort of the middle 1800s, we started to use coal in quite large amounts. Until about the time of the First World War, and then things sort of between wars, there was a uh, higher, so we didn't uh, uh, sort of increase. But come the Second World War, both of the use of oil and gas, this whole use of fossil fuel has, has taken off. And uh, I guess one would expect that if, if uh, this is going to affect climate and, and global warming, uh, we should see something reflected in the record. This is the global uh, annual mean temperature record. This comes from the, uh, the UK Hadley Centre, published by the Bureau of Meteorology on their website. It's also available in the, uh, from Hadley Centre. But uh, when coal was that first being used in the uh, late 1800s, early 1900s, the temperature was actually falling. From about 1910 to 1940, the hiatus between the war years, the temperature rose. When the use of fossil fuel really took off after the First World War, after the Second World War, temperatures again sort of declined. And then in the middle 70s, temperatures took up again, as Bob pointed out, they seem to have come to a bit of a hiatus again at this time. There's some discussion about whether that's sort of part of the sort of the anomaly will go on. What we do know is that it hasn't sort of continued on with this use of fossil fuel. Why might we expect carbon dioxide to affect our climate? Well, this comes out of the IPCC. It says it's a greenhouse effect. Solar radiation passes through the clear atmosphere. Uh, some is absorbed in the Earth. Some is reflected by the clouds. Some is reflected by the Earth's surface back to space. There's also this infrared radiation because the Earth is warm, emits infrared radiation from the Earth's surface. Some of the infrared radiation passes through the atmosphere, and some is absorbed and re-emitted in all directions by greenhouse gas molecules and clouds. The effect of this is to warm the Earth's surface and the lower atmosphere. This is the official explanation for the greenhouse effect. This actually is an incorrect statement for three reasons. Firstly, as it's been known for at least 150 years, greenhouse gases emit infrared radiation independently of absorption. There's no reason that the, the greenhouse gases have to absorb and re-emit, as the IPCC says. As, as um, active molecules, they will emit radiation themselves in all directions. The second is that the greenhouse gas of the atmosphere actually emit more infrared radiation into space and back to the surface than they absorb, and they tend to cool the atmosphere. Now, how do we know this? Well, quite regularly during winter, we have cold outbreaks of air from the, from the polar regions, the high latitudes. And the reason we have that, those outbreaks of cold air is because those great masses of air are in fact radiating to space and cooling. They become much colder than the, uh, the air in the uh, middle and high latitudes, and they sink and move uh, towards the equator and then replaced by warm air. So there's this con continual exchange of, of warm air and cold air between the tropics and the uh, polar regions. We'll see, not only from our experience in a few minutes, but actually the numbers add up to that as well. And also the Earth's surface emits more infrared radiation, radiation than it absorbs, and the net infrared radiation loss tends to cool the surface. We know this every evening. If you're sitting out on a warm afternoon, the sun goes down and you start feeling cold. It's because there's more emission of infrared radiation than, uh, than what's absorbed. But greenhouse gases are not warming the surface. This is a nonsense statement here as an explanation of what the greenhouse effect is. We get this from the numbers. Again, this IPCC should have recognised this because this is also a diagram that appears about three pages earlier in the IPCC report in their explanations. What we see is that for the atmosphere, the emission of radiation, and we can see this, 165 from the atmosphere, 30 from the clouds, 195 out to, to space, and 324 back to the surface, 519 units watts per square metre that the atmosphere is emitting. But it's only absorbing 350 from the surface of the 390, 40 goes straight through the space, 
350 absorbed, and 67 from the atmosphere. 478 absorbed, there's a net loss of 102. The atmosphere is continuing to cool because of infrared radiation. And at the surface, we have the emission of 390 units and the absorption of 334. We have a loss of 66. So the, the notion that greenhouse gases are in some way warming the atmosphere is just a fifth. Long wave radiation cools the atmosphere and the Earth's surface. What actually happens though in the in the radiation balance of the of the Earth? As we've said, there's a net loss radiation loss from the atmosphere. There's a net radiation gain at the Earth's surface. That's 168 from the sun. The 390 minus 324. So we get a gain of 120 at the surface. So on balance. At face value, there's a balance there, but there's a big problem, and a problem which was addressed and uh, explained back in 1958 by Herbert Real and Joan Malkus. Joan Malkus is better known as Joan Simpson, one of the most decorated meteorologists in the US. And they pointed out that uh, the atmosphere is a great insulator for radiation. It doesn't pass energy by conduction. And therefore, even though the surface is warmer than the, the atmosphere, that, that excess energy is not going to get to the atmosphere by conduction. They also pointed out that the total energy of the atmosphere per unit mass, this is the internal energy and the potential energy, actually increases with height. Uh, others might recognise this as a, a potential energy. But if the total energy increases with height, any turbulence in the atmosphere will in fact bring heat and energy from the upper layers of the atmosphere back to the surface. So turbulence is not going to take that, that uh, energy through. What they pointed out was that uh, there is, in fact, the latent and uh, sensible heat exchange between the, the uh, surface and the lower atmosphere, but this can't get to the, into the higher levels except by one way, and that's by deep convection. And so it's deep convection that is transferring that uh, heat and moisture from the, the boundary layer of the atmosphere through the atmosphere so that we get this balance between the, the solar input at the surface and the net radiation loss from the, uh, from the atmosphere. Solar energy penetrates the atmosphere and warms the Earth's surface. Deep convection towers are constantly distributing energy from the surface through the atmosphere. Whenever you look outside and see a deep convection cloud, you say, it's doing the job. It's keeping us cool at the surface. It's taking that heat and it's getting it up into the atmosphere to radiate to space. And the atmosphere radiates that energy to space. But boy, Convection requires an atmospheric temperature lapse rate right, greater than 6.5 degrees centigrade per kilometre in the lower troposphere, what's called the moist adiabatic lapse rate. So the cooling of the, atmos of the atmosphere and the warming of the surface actually is continually producing convective instability and allowing the setting up the conditions for convection. And the reason that we have, sorry, the reason we have uh, warmer temperatures at the surface is the need for buoyant convection to get the excess energy from the surface to the, uh, to the atmosphere so it can be radiated off to space. And the greenhouse, oops, the, the greenhouse effect is essentially part of the energy processes of the, of the atmosphere involving also convection. Uh, before the IPCC and its explanation, the energy budget of the atmosphere was always called the radiation convective energy budget. For some reason, for the greenhouse uh, and, and global climate change uh, scenario, the convection side has been uh, wiped off. We have the pseudo phony explanation of what the greenhouse effect is. 